Alright. Welcome everyone. Um, I am the manager of the dev room and also presenting this talk. It doesn't mean that I select my own talk because that would be really very easy. I have a whole uh, panel of uh, people uh, voting on talks and uh, somehow I select them. So, um, uh, I'll be talking about uh, Alt Theater. It's a, uh, a project that we've been working on over the past uh, year and a half. And uh, today I want to explain you a little bit about uh, what we've done so far. Hopefully make some good by it. Firstly, about myself. My name is Walter Heck. I am uh, 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 doing technical stuff at Bolin Data. Uh, I started the company in 2008, um, but then uh, I decided that uh, I'm better at technical stuff than running companies. So uh, my uh, beautiful wife is uh, now the uh, CEO, and she does a much better job than I did, and I can focus on the technical stuff. So, uh, that works very well. Um, I am a uh, public instructor. I wouldn't normally uh, mention that because I'm a bit of a I don't like bragging, but it's relevant for this talk because we uh, have built the whole thing in uh, public code. Uh, so I guess that takes it out. My background is uh, uh, MySQL. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of MySQL DBA uh, uh, stuff. Uh, I started my career seven years of Delphi programming. Um, hands up if you like Delphi. Yeah. The only true programming language. No. Uh, <laughs> Inside your eyes, but uh, it made me love a whole bunch of functionality that I didn't, haven't seen yet in many other programs. Uh, I love open source, which is also why I'm standing here. Uh, and uh, I've been in IT for almost a decade. While I was writing that this week, I was like, oh, it's what it is. Um, so first up, the uh, problem that we uh, saw. Uh, so there's many, many new tools. Uh, every whatever, every morning you wake up and there is a mentioning of a new tool that you want to look into and that uh, uh, you want to start using, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But time is limited, and so is your brain. So that's not possible. Um, however, over time, we usually see a, uh, a good number of tools that become sort of best practice uh, and turn out to be working together uh, quite nicely. Um, however, um, as that stack of tools grows that can manage parts of our infrastructure, so grows the time that we are investing in managing the infrastructure to manage our infrastructure. Puppet is really nice, but now you're uh, that, maintaining a Top of master, and uh, you need to put your code into some kind of version control. So you're working with version control. You want to do uh, um, do some kind of a, a linting, so you need to make sure that your code adheres to lint. All of this is all great, and it's all nice, and it delivers you good quality code, but it's all time that you're spending on not managing those web servers that run your company's front end website, which is what you actually hire for. Um, and this uh, has a tendency to get a bit out of control if you're not careful about it. Um, so that's, I see more and more time spent on managing these tools. Is this microphone working or is it dropping out? Okay. Now we've had problems all day. Um, the second part of the problem is that um, you're managing a, a, a Red Hat infrastructure, you're managing a Red Hat infrastructure, and I'm managing a Red Hat infrastructure. A lot of the things that you're doing are actually the same. There is not much difference between your, uh, uh, let's say, young mirrors and mine. Uh, just that we want to keep it private and inside our company and on premise and all of these things, whatever your requirements are. Um, but in reality, we're just doing the same work. And I don't particularly like doing work that other people also do. Uh, so um, we, we started thinking about this. We all want uh, centralized logging. It shouldn't be something that you have to think about and you want to set up an infrastructure for. Uh, obviously, the larger your, uh, the infrastructure that you have to manage, the more you have to think about these things. But let's say some 100 servers, you don't really want to think about what do I need to do to get centralized logging going. You just want to do more. So, we saw these problems in practice because uh, in my company, we do uh, uh, consulting, so we, we go from customer to customer and we see the same 
Maybe we could turn off the screen thing right there? It's not my laptop because my laptop I cannot use it because it doesn't connect, et cetera. Ooh. Was that seven minutes on the same slide? Yeah. Oh, God. We, we both I'm louder than Um <laughs> Yeah, so uh, doing all these consulting projects with uh, uh, different companies, we saw over and over, we kept doing the same thing. You know, this can be a style. So we started thinking about, okay, what if we uh, come up with a stack of these tools that we keep using over and over, we convince our clients to use that uh, tool stack or convince us of reasons why they shouldn't use that specific tool and to use something else. Uh, and we work on making a well-integrated solution um, for uh, the basics of infrastructure management. And so was the idea for, for, for Off Theater with Born. So the idea is that uh, we are uh, using Puppet to stick together a bunch of other tools. Uh, in this case, we have, uh, uh, so we, because we're managing our infrastructure with Puppet, um, we are also in need of some kind of version control. Uh, lots of companies, unfortunately, are still scared of uh, not on-premise. Uh, so GitLab uh, it seems to be a good uh, contender. They are making really awesome software really quickly, you know, unless you're on GitLab.com this week. But, uh, they, for those who didn't laugh, that you are either have no sense of humor or you didn't know, there was no, uh, uh, they, uh, they managed to drop their production database and all of their five backup sources were not working, so they had a bit of a few sleepless nights. Um, either way, on-premise GitLab, <laughs> uh, compared, uh, coupled with the, the CI, the continuous integration solution from GitLab, uh, works really well. I have a session about GitLab CI tomorrow morning at 10 minutes to 11 in the testing and automation uh, uh, room if you want to see what it does. Um, then we have uh, server monitoring where it's, uh, we chose Isinga. Uh, Isinga is, uh, originally was an, a Navios clone. It's, by now it doesn't use a single uh, uh, line of Navios code anymore, but it's uh, still <laughs> compatible uh, with Navios. And, uh, it seems to be a, 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 a quite a popular uh, server monitoring tool. Then centralized logging, we have the ELK stack. Um, I think they are trying to get us to call it something else, but I think that everybody by now knows it as the ELK stack. Elasticsearch, log stash, uh, Kibana. Uh, we added Grafana uh, with that because it's, uh, uh, I'll show you in a minute. Um, and on the front, uh, file, file beat to push logs to uh, log stash. And then last but not least, uh, chat ops. Uh, in this case, we chose Mattermost. Mattermost is an open source Slack alternative. Uh, they have been doing really nice things as well in the past uh, two years. Uh, Mattermost comes integrated with GitLab. So if you're installing a community edition of GitLab, it's literally a matter of one uh, configuration parameter, and you are up and running with uh, Mattermost. Um, surprisingly, and ah, that was not another set of minutes. <laughs> it's four. I count. Um, surprisingly, communication in many companies is uh, the source of many problems. Um, so maybe I'll just use actual keys. Maybe that works. Um, surprisingly, uh, communication is the source of many problems in many uh, uh, companies, especially as they grow larger. And a surprising amount of people have not uh, uh, jumped on the. Slack, HipChat, whatever bandwagon. Mattermost is a nice, cost-free, easy entry solution to get that going. And uh, just creating an, a room called engineering that anyone from any team that's interested in engineering can join can do wonders. We've seen this in a number of, uh, of our clients where all of a sudden people started communicating. And uh, uh, before it was, oh, we'll, we'll submit a ticket to the networking team and, you know, you know how this goes, uh, not very nice. But so just providing a low barrier uh, place for people to communicate is, a, uh, is quite uh, useful. So that's why chat ops is, uh, is a part of those uh, fundamental pillars of uh, Um We are all supposed to be experts <coughs> on one or more of these topics, so why not share our knowledge and make things together so that we all benefit from you know, the standard open source uh, how does this look uh, in a picture? Um, 
This picture doesn't <laughs> actually name products, but it is very easily one-to-one -one mappable to products. So we have orchestration and provisioning uh, is a puppet in our case. Uh, oh, sorry, at the bottom layer we have your infrastructure. It doesn't really matter what kind of infrastructure it is. Ops theater is the part that comes in after you have your operating systems up and running um, because you need a puppet agent installed in order to start configuring stuff. That's kind of the uh, level where we uh, come in. Um, so you have your, your infrastructure, and then uh, we uh, use Puppet here in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Puppet here in the middle for configuration management, some orchestration. Uh, we're currently uh, researching putting Ansible in for the orchestration uh, part. Um, your Puppet code lives in version control. This is GitLab. Uh, whenever you check something into version control, it automatically triggers a, a, a build in, uh, in GitLab CI to check if everything is fine. If GitLab CI, for instance, finds a problem, it automatically posts a message in your Mattermost uh, room saying, hey, this build is broken, so that everybody who is interested in it can see. Um, we have our monitoring solution here, uh, Isinga, which monitors all of the uh, infrastructure. And we have centralized logging uh, and analysis with uh, uh, log, uh, log dash Elasticsearch, and then Kibana and Kibana uh, as, a, uh, as a GUI for that. So the point is that all of these tools are not made by us, and I don't want to be spending time on making these tools. The point is that we make these, this set integrate, integrated nicely, so that you don't have to go and spend a ton of time on setting up uh, your plastic search, your log session, make sure that it all logs to the right place, and uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the vision is uh, uh, to have a, uh, combination of publicly acknowledged best practices open source software. I was considering putting enterprise back in there because personally I think it's quite important that um, tool, if you're using open source tools in a company that's larger than a few people, at some point somebody is going to say, I want to pay for support. Uh, regardless of whether you think that's a great idea, that is a reality and uh, therefore we see that the uh, uh, open source projects that have some kind of enterprise backing uh, generally are more successful in the enterprise uh, uh, environments because people can go out and buy a check mark in a box. Um, so we use all of these pieces of open software and we glue them together using Puppet uh, so that it becomes easier to uh, manage it all. I have a demo after the slides are up, but uh, we have to, it's going to be a bit limited because the demo is running on my laptop and this is just SSHing into my laptop. But I'll show you as much as I can. Um, so basically we're building an abstraction layer uh, that hides or makes easier all of the things that you need to do that are not part of, that are not specific to your business. Uh, so. Uh, uh, there's a few examples here. If, you, uh, if you're pushing new code to GitLab, it needs to be tested by GitLab CI. Uh, and when that uh, goes well or doesn't go well, a notification should go to chat room, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> this is standard. It doesn't matter what kind of company you're in or what you're trying to do. Um, this should not be something you need to think about setting up. <coughs> and so goes for all the other items, and you can think of probably a hundred more. Uh, I would even say that you can get to like 50% of all the stuff that you're doing is actually not specific or unique to your company. Think of it as building uh, packages versus compiling software. Compiling software was the thing before, uh, um, but then we figured out that package management is actually quite convenient and takes away a lot of hassle, so why not do the same on operations level? Um, that said, uh, who is this for and who is it specifically not for? Um, if you want to use it, that's totally fine, but uh, for infrastructures with less than 10 servers, it doesn't really make sense because as it stands now, uh, with all of these pieces of software, you need about four to five uh, virtual machines to run on all of this. So if you have less than 10 servers to manage, then you can wonder whether that overhead actually makes any sense. Um, Non-puppet environments, uh, if you're already using Chef or Ansible or Salt to configure everything, then probably replicating <laughs> Theater into your environment is going to be a lot of cursing and of discussable, discussable uh, benefit. Um, 
pure sun cloud environments, if you're doing Amazon, for instance, the Amazon Way, as I like to call it, then uh, Puppet is probably not your best tool of choice. Uh, and you can wonder whether you want to dive into the uh, wormhole of uh, trying to fit Obsidian on Amazon. It'll run, and you can do it if you really want to, but uh, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily the best tool of choice. Um, and the, the, the last uh, uh, one, if you already have a fully implemented and automated environment, then it's probably also not very much uh, used. On the other hand, if you have um, uh, already used one or more of these tools, so uh, I'm now uh, consulting with a client, and they were already using GitLab, uh, they uh, were already using uh, uh, Navios phone for monitoring, so it wasn't a very big stretch to start introducing the new tools one by one uh, until we had the full observer stack there. Um, completely new environments, that's obviously where it becomes the most useful. Sorry. Uh, completely new environments where there is nothing yet, that makes for an ideal candidate because then you can get up and running very fairly quickly. And if you already have skills in one or more of these tools, then your life is going to be considerably easier because you don't have to learn a whole bunch of new technology very quickly. The current state of Hop Theater is uh, we just released uh, version 2 uh, this week, uh, which I'm very happy with. It was a while in the making, um, but uh, we're there. Um, you can check it out at theater.com, which will just redirect you to the lab. Um, The new things in, in version two is that it is easier to get started. So uh, before you had to do a whole bunch of stuff to even check out what it does. Now you can just git clone, go to the right directory, and call the right vagrant up command and wait 45 minutes because uh, it takes a while for a puppet master using the format and using and MySQL and GitLab and all of these things to get installed. But it does work without interaction. Um, we have started to move towards uh, smart parameters in the format uh, as opposed to Hira. Somebody mentioned it in the questions uh, uh, after the last talk. Hira is really nice, but if you have large infrastructures, it gets fairly complicated. Um, and the other thing we found is that uh, very often you have people in your uh, operations teams, especially if you have application administrators, they don't want to learn how to git commit, clone, pull, branch, and merge. <laughs> whatever, uh, they just want to make sure that, um, I don't know, this application points at the, or the load balancer points at a different URL, whatever. Um, so <coughs> using the foreman, that becomes a bit easier. Um, basic stuff like SMTP and LDAP, if you want to use them, you have to fill them in, uh, uh, out in one of the config files and uh, throughout the whole environment, all of the tools will be configured uh, with LDAP and, uh, and SMTP. Um, it sounds like basic stuff, but again, this is stuff that we are all doing that we that shouldn't be specific to our environment. The address that you want to be using, yes, that's specific. The Active Directory group or the, uh, the, the LDAP group that you want to be using, yes, okay, that's specific. But the fact that you want to be able to log in to GitLab using LDAP, that's not unique for your environment. Um, it's basically the first version where we have basic information <coughs> for, uh, for all the, the tools that we have. And now it becomes a matter of making it more smart. What, where can we add more integrations and more uh, uh, things? Uh, we're thinking about, for instance, a uh, Grafana dashboard that automatically shows groups of servers and automatically creates graphs when you add a new uh, server uh, to your infrastructure. It automatically shows up in Grafana. These kind of things uh, are up for the next uh, releases. Um, so that's the, the road ahead. Um, we're uh, um, we've just uh, uh, in one of the uh, deployments, we've uh, enabled the uh, matter most notifications from Logstash. So Logstash has a Slack API. Uh, sorry, uh, matter most has a Slack API. Logstash has a, uh, a Slack uh, output. So you can uh, uh, enable a Logstash output for certain log messages so that they show up automatically in your Mattermost chat rooms. Very basic stuff, but um, let's say a failed bucket run, you want to know about it, or maybe you don't, and that's also fine. Um, so we're playing around with that. 
more chatbots, more interactive chatbots, so uh, uh, a bot where you can uh, say, show me this Grafana dashboard for that server, uh, give me a Kibana uh, URL that automatically takes me to all of the queries regarding X, Y, Z, uh, that kind of stuff is, uh, uh, is coming up. Um, package management, we found out that uh, in, in the deployments that we've done so far, almost everybody wants to use on-site uh, uh, YUM repositories, not the public uh, uh, international YUM repositories, so uh, either Catello or some other uh, uh, way to uh, make it easier to have uh, your own uh, package versions. Um, easier deployment, uh, someone uh, in our company has been working on uh, Packer and Terraform uh, stuff uh, to be able to uh, Terraform uh, into whatever cloud or uh, uh, infrastructure you want. Um, security scans, the foreman has a nice uh, uh, plugin for uh, OpenSCAP, um, so that's in the, in the plan. Um, backups, I'm not sure about. I'm welcome to hear your ideas about that later if you have them. Um, whether backup is something that is generic enough to have an opinion about, because most companies that I've seen already have a certain backup uh, solution in place. And I don't think that, I'm not sure whether it is a great idea to, to automate that in, into OpsiR as well. Um, so that is the road ahead. Uh, how can you help? Uh, first of all, just try it out. If you want to bring up the full stack, I warn you, it takes about 12 gigabytes of memory. Uh, uh, in, uh, but there is a vagrant uh, 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 environment for it. So if you go to gitlab.com slash opsiR opsiR, and then uh, there you can find the instructions on how to get it, uh, get it working up and running. Um, right now it's uh, hosted on our olandeta.com GitLab, and that is simply because it's uh, still a fairly young and small project and it doesn't make sense yet to have it hosted uh, on its own. Um, however, I would prefer to decouple Opsider from Olandeta. I don't uh, we don't intend to ever make money off of this other than selling services or something like that, but the, the, the code itself will always be uh, open source um, because I don't believe that such a project needs to lend itself to um, proprietary code or pr proprietary add-ons. Um, as the functionality, if you are very skilled at Terraform, then please uh, take a look at what is there now and see if you can uh, improve it. Um, there are some requests for um, being able to not use tool X, Y, Z and be able to use tool A, B, C instead. So uh, let's say that you want to uh, um, uh, be able to use uh, Splunk instead of uh, uh, Elasticsearch, or you want to be able to use uh, uh, good old Marios instead of Xinga. Uh, I want to make that possible, so if that's your interest, then uh, please uh, uh, go ahead. Spread the word. The Op Theater Twitter account, I created it yesterday because I realized there wasn't one, so uh, the internet is full of conversations with it, but not. Um, and uh, we need a website. Uh, I am not a web developer, and I will never be. So uh, right now, if you go to optheater.com, it just uh, redirects you to kidnap.com. <coughs> For, there was something else last week, but I decided that was so horrible that uh, we just uh, bitched all of it. Um, so in short, any help is welcome, even if it's just bitching or coming to me after this session and telling me that you like it or you don't like it or you have different ideas or you're doing something similar or we can work together, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, very open. Um, and then uh, I was going to use this, uh, the rest of this time for a demo. However, this is going to be a bit more challenging. We'll give it a try anyway. Uh, so, uh, what I have done is. <coughs> What I have done here is uh, this is a Git clone of the Opsider uh, remote. Is it there? Yes, here. Can I edit the session? I'll make the background white.
it's easier to read. Except for the yellow. Let's make the yellow for the house. I didn't change my yellow. Well, either way. Um, So um, right now I'm sitting in the uh, top directory, which has a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, so basically, the Opseeder uh, repository, as it is, is a, um, uh, a puppet control repository with some extra directories that have some extra stuff in it. Um, namely, uh, here the deploy directory has a Uh, some directories for Packer, Terraform, and most notably Vagrant Oscar. Um, let me show you Vagrant Oscar a little bit. Uh, so Vagrant Oscar is quite nice. Uh, so it, uh, if you see here, it's a plugin for uh, for Vagrant, originally developed by I believe the Puppet Lab support de 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 department to create quickly create Puppet Enterprise uh, uh, um, environments but it's very useful for a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So in our Vagrant environment, you will find a master, which is a Puppet Enterprise master, and we'll find a false master, which is a Puppet Open Source uh, uh, master. I think that instance, Elasticsearch, GitLab, uh, MySQL, Elasticsearch engine uh, <coughs> will also run um, uh, Kibana and Grafana and Logstash. Uh, so it's quite busy if you want to uh, deploy this in a larger production environment, you're going to have to split it up, but all the puppet code makes that easy. Um, MySQL, and then we have four test machines, the PE client, the FOSS client, RHEL 7, RHEL 6, and the Ubuntu Trusty uh, client. So right now we have a bunch of them running. Uh, however, normally you are probably used to... A vagrant file that has the whole definition of all of this uh, stuff. You won't find that here. What we do is we set some environment variables that we'll use somewhere down the line. And then here, this is the vagrant uh, up uh, command. So we uh, load some uh, uh, Oscar config and then uh, do a vagrant configure with the, uh, the config that comes out of Oscar. Um, and to show you what Oscar can do, it's quite nice. Uh, so in uh, uh, Oscar, you have two main files. You have a roles.yaml and you have a vms.yaml. Uh, vms are the actual machines that you want to configure, and roles is a list of different roles that each VM can have. Um, so we see here, for instance, a role for a Puppet Enterprise master, uh, for a, uh, a managed host, for different machines with different uh, uh, amounts of memory. So all this, uh, this this does, if I assign this role to a host, it gets two gigs of, uh, of memory from uh, VirtualBox. Uh, one gig of memory, etc. cetera. Uh, down here, we have, this is all the code that is needed to turn a machine into a, uh, an open source uh, a puppet master, uh, an enterprise agent, a puppet agent that will register itself in the foreman, uh, a rel7 agent, etc., etc. So here we have all of our roles. They are small pieces of code. And then in our vms.yaml, we have <coughs> VMs. So here you'll find, for instance, the definition for our false master. Uh, we give it a, a host only IP address so that it works in any network that you're in. You determine which uh, box uh, that needs to be uh, deployed on this, or so it's working on a CentOS 7.2 uh, box at the moment. Uh, we give it a host name, and then these roles are the roles from the roles.yaml that I sh uh, showed before. So this becomes quite nice because instead of having a bunch of repeated code in each machine, uh, each machine only has a number of uh, roles assigned to it. 
So you have here, for instance, our Elasticsearch machine needs to be registered with the foreman after it's uh, up running. But our uh, Isenga machine also needs to be registered with, uh, with the foreman. Instead of repeating that piece of code or uh, putting it in an external script, we just uh, uh, do that here. Anyway, this uh, Vagrant environment is mostly for uh, development, so I won't go too deep into this. So, uh, yeah, we have our Vagrant status, so we have our, uh, uh, the whole stack up and running on, that, uh, on this laptop here. The downside is that if you run SSH into that laptop, I cannot actually show the uh, web interfaces at the moment because they are running on a host-only virtual box here. Um, but that said, I can show you something else, which is, let's say we want to add a new machine to this. Uh, so imagine that if you're on a, in a production environment, this, you wouldn't do this with, uh, um, with Vagrant, but you'd bring up what I'm doing right now, you would be doing this in, I don't know, VMware or um, whatever your infrastructure management is. So let's call this false client <coughs> false then. Fast client pause them. Um, so while we wait for that to finish, here on our puppet master, I cannot actually show you the foreman uh, because of things. But I can show you that right now. We have a bunch of certificates. So we have uh, our Elasticsearch machine, our FOSS, uh, uh, yeah, one of the test uh, machines, GitLab, I think, uh, the Public Master itself, and my SQL machine uh, up and running. And after this is finished running, um, we log into it, and then it will show up here as well. So it will automatically be, uh, this machine will automatically be registered in, um, uh, in our Public Master. <laughs> Uh, you'll see in a minute, you'll hopefully see it uh, automatically get uh, the Isinga client installed and it, uh, it, uh, um, it registers itself with Isinga. It uh, starts uh, file beat and starts automatically sending logs to uh, log stash. Um, so all of these things are things that I don't want to necessarily be thinking about. Um, Vagrant is very uh, colorful with its output and we are going to need one more. One of the things that you see here on the, on the right hand side, uh, this, um, where it says all of these machine names and it says updating hosts, this is actually a Vagrant plugin. Um, so the, the Vagrant Oscar comes with a plugin where it is, a, it is able to insert ETC hosts records on all of the machines that are already running inside the same uh, Vagrant environment. So if I go on my uh, Puppet Master now here, At ETC host, we'll see false.vm here. Obviously, um, ETC host is a poor man's DNS, so we, we wouldn't actually do this in a production environment, but this would be managed in your actual DNS uh, environment. So we didn't want to make ETC host part of uh, Ops Theater because it's really not best practices outside of uh, uh, anything else. Oh, I see. Kept the IP address the same. Let's see what happens. Close client rels. 
7, so we'll destroy the other machine so we don't get an IP conflict. But uh, in order to have things happen on one machine that you uh, uh, did on another machine, uh, it requires what is called exported resources. And that means that a puppet run has to happen on the first machine that is exporting its uh, definition. And then has, another puppet run has to happen on the other machine. In this case, uh, we, have our, sorry, we have our new uh, uh, client uh, that runs puppet. And after that has run puppet, it exported the fact that it exists to Isinga, or to the, to the Puppet Master actually, and then when we run uh, Puppet on the Isinga node, we'll see automatically the node uh, appearing. Um, now we should be able to get into this thing. <laughs> As you see up here, at the very start of the puppet run, I cannot because all message closed run. At the very start of the puppet run, you'll see an error message saying, "Hey, uh, I don't know this machine because when this machine first connects to the puppet master, it says, "Hey, uh, I've never seen that machine before." But because of the way the foreman is set up, it automatically registers itself. It just doesn't get any configuration yet. So, uh, as you see here, it's immediately uh, uh, it's immediately done. Configuring all that it did is uh, sync a bunch of plugins. But if I run Puppet Agent, it, it didn't actually uh, sync any plugins. Normally, I would show you here in the web interface of the foreman how the machine shows up here. But for now, you'll just have to believe me or try it yourself. Now it's run once and it's made itself the one the moment the the, uh, the puppet report uh, arrives at the at the puppet master the puppet master knows of this machine. So if I now do puppet search, you'll see here it's registered. However, it doesn't get any configuration yet because I don't want that. I don't want random machines getting random configuration. So what I need to do is uh, uh, go into my uh, foreman instance. And assign class to it. I'll just assign a base, uh, a basic class to it. <laughs> there. So I've assigned a, a, a standard uh, class to it that comes with Obsidian. It's a it's a basic role that. Uh, uh, Deploys a uh, async agent and a uh, file read, etc. Et so now you'll see, start seeing the, uh, the machine getting uh, uh, configured with, uh, with those uh, specific classes. Um, that'll take a little bit of time, uh, and after that is done, uh, we can also run the public agent on the async node uh, and then uh, uh, watch it appear from there. You have a question?
Yeah, so the, the, the thing is that, so the, the question is, if you search for Obstator on Google, you will find a GitHub repository that has nothing in it. The problem is that we, uh, for a while, we were hosting on GitHub, but then we thought to ourselves, okay, we are, we are, uh, how to say that? Um, bringing out the message of Obstator, so we should eat our own dog food and host on our own stuff. And then for a while, we were hosted on GitLab and mirrored on GitHub, but that is a total nightmare. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it's a, that's a no-go. So ignore everything on GitHub. Everything lives on GitLab only, and there is a real Sorry? What? No. He says it's there. Oh, maybe the, maybe the Google link goes to a 404. It doesn't for me. Yeah, if you look at the files that are in the docs repo. Anyway, yes, th thank you. Issue, uh, submit an issue and a. Um, we'll fix that. The, the thing is that we've just released 2.0 uh, this week, so some of that stuff still points to an older version. Probably that's a link to 1.7. Um, anyway, our uh, puppet run here is finished now. Um, and you'll see that if we scroll up a little bit... <coughs> oh, you have your scrolling set the other way than I have. <laughs> um, so you'll see that it uh, exported a bunch of... Uh, uh, sorry, it created a bunch of endpoints. Um, you'll see up here that it created some other Isinga stuff. Uh, um, the file detail uh, you see here is all being created. So now, if we go on our Isinga node and we run a public agent here, So um, by now you might be thinking, or some of you might be thinking, hey, but I have all of this stuff already, so what's the point? Uh, the point is that all of this stuff that you're seeing here is not specific to any environment, and therefore anybody can use this. And if, we, if you start thinking in that abstraction layer where anything that's not specific to your environment you put into a theater in this case, you will arrive at a much cleaner uh, configuration for the stuff that is specific for your infrastructure. Um, so um, the last uh, the last couple of environments where we've deployed this, the public code that is specific to the environment of, the, of that specific environment, uh, specific to the environment of that specific environment, um, that uh, is actually very little compared to all of the other stuff. <coughs> so uh, here you see the. Uh, um, shows up in Kibana, uh, it's log, it starts putting its logs there. So if you look at the host itself, um, you can see that depending on what is on the host itself, Starts, for instance, putting its uh, Isinga logs to. Uh, uh, where is my I really have to get used to this whole uh, inverted. Uh, so you'll see uh, prospectors for the Isinga logs, etc., etc. So it starts automatically uh, sending a whole bunch of logs that you care about uh, to uh, uh, to FileBeat, so that you can there start doing things. Uh, it has automatically created in the uh, Grafana uh, dashboard a data source for Elasticsearch and for InfluxDB. Uh, I think I sent its uh, uh, data to InfluxDB so that in Grafana you can make log, uh, you can make graphs with, uh, coming from the data coming from uh, I think and data coming from 
Elasticsearch, and as we go along, uh, this will be more and more interesting. Uh, I think that's it for now. I see that I have five minutes left. Um, so let's go and see if anybody has a question. Does anybody have a question? Zero questions. Awesome. <laughs> the question is how, how are we, what are we putting behind Puppet? We are, at the moment, we're currently using uh, Puppet DB. Yeah? Uh, PuppetDB, uh, there's also a plugin for the foreman, so you can check from the foreman what's in the PuppetDB. It, it works quite nicely uh, together. Um, so there is also some Postgres in there. Uh, some of the plans uh, uh, involve also in pulling those uh, parts separately to separate uh, VMs if you want, so you, they're, they become easier to manage. But for now, that's a uh, relatively standard uh, straight out of the box. One more question. Uh, portability is a different operating system. Is a good, que good question. So uh, you saw that I uh, brought up a rel uh, uh, um, instance, the false uh, image that I just brought up is a rel uh, image. At the moment, we support uh, Ubuntu, rel 7, rel 6, and Debian. Um, but it's fairly easy to bring because the, the, the servers themselves, they all run rel 7 at the moment, or CentOS 7 actually. Um, but that's only the operator server. So the, GitLab, uh, I think, uh, for uh, uh, the master uh, MySQL instance. However, the servers that you manage with that, you can choose your operator. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I haven't had uh, a machine that is not leaning to my hand for quite a long time. There are some Windows uh, machines that we'll be adding in one of the deployments that we have. Um, so at that moment, we'll probably have some uh, um, uh, role or a client for all here to have uh, things like file being the, uh, the Windows set to register with I think it will never be as, uh, as fully integrated as the uh, I imagine. Sorry guys, if you're leaving the room, that's totally fine, but can you do it quietly because people still have questions? That's the man the demo manager is speaking, not me. Sorry? Staging. The question is if there's any uh, staging environment for this. So what I showed you now is actually uh, the, the development slash test environment for testing off state or functionality itself. Um, the point is that uh, all of this brings up a control repository, and then uh, there it's up to you to bring up a test environment uh, and, and connect test machines to either the the the, how say it, the basic the, the puppet master that comes included, or even bring up a second uh, puppet master, which is also totally fine. You can have a second machine that also has a, the same uh, uh, obviously or puppet role or a false master, and it will just get the same configuration. Anyone else? No. I was really hoping that people would get feedback here because uh, so far we haven't been really um, uh, speaking in public about it because until now it wasn't really something I would recommend other people to use. Um, and now we're getting to a point where it's really adding benefit for other users as well. So I would love to get feedback. Thank you very much.